Welcome to the official Mod Organizer 2 series. MO2 is a mod manager in constant development. When the creator of MO1 left to join Nexus, he made the code open source for others to improve upon. Since then, persons from all over the world have been donating their time and abilities to this tool that they believe in. If you feel that you could help the project, contact information is provided. The MO2 repositories are linked as well. For Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, from Oblivion onward, MO2 is, and will most likely remain, my mod manager of choice. Personal deal-breaking bugs of the past have been fixed, and advancements are consistently being made. Oblivion requires additional tweaking to work with MO2. FO3 and FNV, compared to MO1, receive benefits regarding archive management. Skyrim LE works perfectly with MO1, but I have no reason to not use MO2 for it. 64-bit games cannot use MO1 at all. Easy plugin and asset management via left and right pane load order. Simple and straightforward functionality. A physically and visibly clean data folder. The ability to see and troubleshoot conflicting files from one mod to the next. Profiles for different mod configurations of the same game the choice to use one installation for all games that MO2 manages, a single location for the majority of our modding tools to be launched from, visual aids that MO1 does not possess, and much more. Everything mentioned and more is covered in this series. Videos will be updated pending major advancements and adjustments. Minor updates are noted in the pinned comments. This series has a few prerequisites. As always, links are provided. This series assumes that your games are properly installed and tested prior to downloading Mod Organizer. An archival program is needed to extract MO2. Visual C++ Redistributable 2013 and 2017 are required for MO2 to function. If you already have them, select the Repair option during installation. If you have yet to do so, create an account with NexusMods.com. Navigate to Mod Organizer 2. Download the main, standalone version. Locate the Mod Organizer 2 archive that was downloaded. Right-click it and select Properties. At the bottom of the General tab, if present, activate the Unblock checkbox to assure all files are extracted properly in the next step. Apply then select OK. Open the archive then drag and drop its contents into a folder of your choosing. I create an MO2 folder on my storage drive and place the files there. Send the shortcut of the Mod Organizer EXE to your desktop and launch it. At the select window, there are two options. Create a new instance, which allows the usage of one executable to manage all games by later creating additional instances when needed, or to create a portable instance which requires a new installation of MO2 per game like MO1 does. For this guide, we use one installation to manage all of our games. A playlist for MO1 is provided for reference. At the Enter Instance Name window, select the title from the dropdown or enter a name of your choosing. Once the instance has a title, select OK. Select OK at the Data Directory window, then choose the first game for MO2 to manage. Select No at the Tutorial window, and yes, when asked to associate MO with NXM links. By default, MO2 uses app data for storage. Here we change those directories to meet our storage needs. Directories can be created anywhere, excluding game folders. Once you start installing mods, do not change these paths. Changing paths does not automatically move files from the original directories which means what was previously installed will need to be reinstalled into the new directories. Again, only change paths now while setting MO up. From the toolbar, open Settings, the wrench and screwdriver icon, and then the Paths tab. Selecting the ellipses to the right of the following directories allows you to choose a new location for them. Base Directory contains a few miscellaneous files as well as all of the following file paths. Setting the following pass to percent base underscore dir percent allows them to be moved with the base directory and kept inside of it. If you have a storage drive, I suggest changing the base directory path to it. Downloads is where mod archives are stored. If available, choose a location on your storage drive to save disk space. These files can be interacted with via the downloads tab. Mods 
is where the actual mod files, loose assets, plugins, and Bethesda archives are stored and from where they are loaded into the game. These are the files seen when double-clicking a mod in the left pane. This directory should be placed on the same drive as the game to assure the fastest possible read speeds. Caches is where MO2 stores data to help maintain smooth processing. This uses little space and should be left in the base directory. Profiles contains all the modded setup information, such as mod lists, load order, profile innies, and saves. The location should not impact performance unless creating a plethora of quick saves, which is something I advise against in various game guides. I leave this in the base directory, but its location is up to you. Overwrite is where MO stores newly generated files that would generally be placed in the game's data directory, such as those created by Xedit. I put this with the mods directory, as it is treated like a mod, at the bottom of MO's left pane. Files such as crash dumps, logs, and mod organizers any file will always remain in app data. This is because these files have to be available, even if the base directory has not yet been read from MO's any file. Select settings from the toolbar. Open the Nexus tab and activate automatically log into Nexus. Enter your Nexus username and password. Select associate with download with manager links. This, as well as entering your login info, allows you to utilize Nexus Mod's mod manager download function. Select OK. From the toolbar, select the Nexus network globe icon to be brought to Nexus via mod organizer. To prepare for the next step, download a mod via a mod manager download option. It doesn't matter what mod, we aren't even going to install it. We do this to allow Mod Organizer to register the available Nexus servers covered in the next step and to finalize the connection between MO2 and Nexus. Open Settings again and then the Nexus tab. The Known Servers window should now display servers available to you. If you don't have a premium account, you may see CDN free. Highlight the known server closest to your geographical region. Drag and drop it into the preferred servers window. From now on, MO will attempt to use this server before others to assure the fastest possible downloads. Once finished, select OK. From the main interface, select the Downloads tab. Right-click the mod archive that we just downloaded and delete it. Archive and Validation allows mods to override the official files in Bethesda archives. This may not be needed at all for 64-bit games and should be grayed out. However, performing the following task as a precaution won't cause any issues. From the toolbar, select Configure Profiles, the ID icon. In the Profiles window, activate the Automatic Archive and Validation checkbox. Remember to do this for each new profile that you create, that is, if you decide to do this at all. If the official plugins of a game are not in the correct order, this step may potentially fix the issue. Open Settings and then the Workarounds tab. Activate Backdate BSAs. If you use an antivirus program to prevent it from blocking or deleting MO2 files, you should add Mod Organizer to its exclusion list. This process differs from one AV program to the next. Refer to your program's manual to find out how to add policy exemptions. Now that we have established the basic setup for our first game, you can do the same for others. Select the Instant Selection dialog icon at the top left of the toolbar and select Yes. Create a new instance and continue forward exactly like we did for the first game. Repeat all steps for this new game, including File Pass Setup by creating and selecting new folders. To switch between established games from the Instant Selection dialog, simply select an instance previously created. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial. Mod Organizer 2 Installation and Setup A huge thank you to Mod Organizer 2 Dev Al12 for all of the help he has given me, to Grant SP, Roy Batty, the Step Wiki and Tannen for information I've carried over from my MO1 series, and the entire GP community. I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.